Now, in order to uh, describe the deformation within a certain continuum, from a base configuration to a reference configuration or from a reference configuration to the current configuration, we need to define some terms for deformation measures. The deformation uh, is generally characterized uh, by means of gradients of motion of a certain point in a continuum to the new, po new position after the certain load application. So these uh, gradients of motion are also called deformation gradients. The deformation gradient will describe the stretches and the rotations that the material fibers have undergone from a certain time zero for the base configuration to a certain time t for the current configuration. Now as shown in the image here, you have the base configuration at C0 and you have the current configuration at CT. And we're considering this one point in the continuum or a little element, which could be a three-dimensional element, uh, between which the, the displacement is given as U. The derivatives of the current uh, displacements with respect or the current location with respect to the base or the reference location arranged in a Jacobian format is called the deformation gradient matrix. This deformation gradient matrix is represented as the derivatives of the location in the current step with respect to the reference position. You can also write that in a three-dimensional or three by three Jacobian format as do x to x with respect to y with respect to z and in the same way for y and for z alike. This represents a second order tensor and the f is known as the therefore the deformation gradient. We can also write this in another way. We can say that the dx which is written as the dx, dy and dz is equal to the deformation gradient with respect to reference location. Therefore, the dx is equal to the deformation gradient times dx. So that's how the deformation gradient is described. The deformation gradient is also a measure which is used to stretch, uh, it's also used to measure the stretch of a material fiber and also the change in angle between the adjacent material fibers due to the deformation. So if it also is a measure of the stretch of a material or a material fiber, then we should be able to define something called the stretch tensors by making use of the deformation gradients. Without going into a lot of details, I can write as I can write that CR is equal to F transpose F, where F was the deformation gradient from the previous slide. These are, this is a symmetric positive definite matrix which is extensively used in the rest of the definition. This is called as the right stretch tensor. There's of course also a left stretch tensor which we will leave out because it is not used in the Lagrangian definition but in the Eulerian. But in general it can be written as the exact opposite, so F F transpose. These matrices naturally emerge from quadratic forms which involve both the change uh, dx for the reference location as well as dx for the current location. So if I uh, write it out just to explain how this is arrived at, then I can write that the dx transpose with dx of course can be also written as dx transpose f transpose f dx which can therefore be written as dx transpose cr dx. And if I do it the exact opposite, starting from the reference location, then I will get, which gives me the right and the left um, stretch tensor. Of course, the first one is uh, most important to us. So we will only be uh, focusing on the right stretch tensor, which is used in the Lagrangian formulation.
A most important property of the deformation gradient is that it can always be decomposed into a unique product of two matrices. So I can always write the displacement gradient, which is written as F, to be equal to R U, where R uh, is an orthogonal matrix corresponding to a rotation. This is an orthogonal matrix and U is a symmetric stretch matrix. And this property for uh, the deformation gradient to be composed of an orthogonal matrix and a symmetric stretch matrix is referred to as polar decomposition. We will not go into a lot of details about this. We will not use it enough in the uh, homework exercises or the assignments, but it's always good to understand where these uh, terms are coming from that will eventually be used in the equilibrium equations for the solution. Now, what we can uh, interpret from the equation over here is that the total deformation is obtained first by applying a stretch, which is defined over here, and then a rotation, which is applied by the orthogonal rotational matrix. So it is a complete definition of the deformation gradient. So the total deformation of point, let's say, of this particular point, uh, from the reference configuration to the final configuration over here has to be composed of, of course, a stretch but also a rotation. So both the terms are included within the deformation gradient which is uh, used by polar decomposition represented by f is equal to r u. Uh, these terms, of course, will depend on which time frame they are from. So it's not, a, it's not just for a standard reference frame but also you can say that for a certain time you will have uh, the uh, deformation gradient to be equal to for the same time step the rotation as well as the stretching. Now by this definition we can also write that F transpose is equal to U transpose R transpose. Therefore the stretch tensor CR can be written as U transpose R transpose R U. Of course if these two matrices are the rotational matrices and are given as identities, then it gets removed and all you get is U transpose U. Therefore, the CR is also sometimes written as U square. So now we have defined the deformation gradient and the stretch tensors. The reason why we needed to know this is that, as I had explained before, because all the uh, characteristics of the problem now in terms of the equilibrium equation have to be defined with respect to the deformed uh, configuration, we need to define new measures of strains for the geometric nonlinear analysis which were not used before. Earlier we've been using the engineering strains which do not are not applicable anymore. So the strain uh, measure which is used mostly for uh, nonlinear analysis, there are a few of them of course, but then the most used one is the Green-Lagrange strain measure. The Green-Lagrange strain measure is generally, in the three-dimensional form of course, is given as or is defined as half of the uh, stretch, uh, the right stretch tensor minus the identity matrix. If I substitute the deformation gradient here, I get F transpose F minus I. Or I can also write it as half of u square minus i which gives you the stretch, uh, the symmetric stretch matrix. Uh, in, the, uh, in the initial form, in the, coord in the Cartesian coordinates, you can define it in a different way which is what I will provide to you now and which uh, forms the basis of our nonlinear analysis at this point. But the definition of the Green-Lagrange strain tensor is something that we will not discuss at details over here. You can of course find a few more um, uh, a bit more description in uh, uh, standard uh, nonlinear finite element analysis books or also in uh, stability analysis books. Uh, so if I have to represent this in the Cartesian coordinates then I can also write the Eij for the green Lagrange to be equal to half of differential of ui xj plus differential of uj x i and differential of u k 
xi, differential of uk, xj. Of course, this might not look very familiar to you. So if I pass on to the uh, engineering notation, so if I say that x1 is x, x2 moves to y, and x3 is nothing but z, then I can write the full form of these equations. I will only give you a couple of them because the rest are quite easy to extrapolate. So these terms will change to y and to change to z to get to the e y y, the, the y component of the strain and the z component of the strain. And of course you also have the mixed component. So you have the, uh, let's start with the y z. And that can be given as half of and so on. Now, if you look carefully over here, the nonlinear portion is contained in this bracket here with the square terms and here with the dual terms here, the second order. If you remove these terms, you will be left with the linear definition of the strains that you have used before in linear elastic problems. So this is where the non-linearity therefore comes in and that is why we need to define the green Lagrange strain tensor with respect to the deformation gradient and the stretch so that we are able to get this change with respect to the non-linear conditions as well. In general you can always write the, stra the strain as the vector that you are quite familiar with by now which can be written as xx and since these terms are equal you can write them as ex and x to e x y and that is the definition of the green lagrange strain tensor